You know, like everyone else, I'm super excited about the new Matrix movie coming out in just a few months. But there's also something really interesting about the movie that I always considered philosophically. The idea behind the information being the world itself. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent study that as always you can find in the description below that tries to answer the question of how much information would the entire observable universe contain if we were to somehow find a way to convert it into what we know here on Earth, bits. With this particular paper not really being philosophical at all but focusing on what we know about various parameters of information and also estimating approximate amount of bits for every particle. So it is actually a really interesting paper, with an actual answer at the end. But before we discuss the paper, I also wanted to briefly mention this right here. The so-called Van Dauer's principle, the principle originally proposed back in 1961. And this principle is directly related to the information and specifically the erasing of information. It states that by erasing information, you actually acquire a little bit of entropy and lose a little bit of energy. Something that has also recently led to a very interesting proposition that can be referred to as the mass energy information equivalence. So not just energy mass equivalence like the Einsteinian E equals mc square, but mass energy information equivalence, suggesting that mass energy and information are all sort of connected to one another. This paper is also in the description below, but in a nutshell it predicts that by erasing a bit of information, you actually lose a tiny tiny bit of mass and thus energy. With the scientists also suggesting that if you were to erase one terabyte of data from a hard drive, you would actually lose a very specific amount of mass, approximately this much in kilograms. Which is a really really small mass and extremely difficult to detect, but nevertheless they do suggest that this is what happens when you erase data. And so in other words, these papers do suggest that information or data or whatever you want to call it is an actually tangible thing. It's something that exists alongside matter, energy and a lot of other physical properties. But this particular topic has been both philosophically and of course experimentally discussed for several decades now. And even today there is really no clear agreement. A lot of information technologists or a lot of computer scientists are definitely leaning toward the fact that it's real, but a lot of physicists seem to disagree. So even today there is really no clear agreement. But quick side note, you also have to remember that we live in the information age. So it's kind of natural for us to assume that maybe information is a real entity. This is what we once again call a zeitgeist, a spirit of time. But whether it's real or not, only future experiments can show us. For now, it's still more or less theoretical. Anyway, so assuming that it's real, we can also make an assumption that all matter and all energy also contains information, and that information in all of this matter will also contain a little bit more energy. So in other words, if we were to take a look at a typical atom, we're going to obviously find electrons, protons, neutrons and so on, and we're also going to find bosons and a lot of other particles, but what's really interesting about this proposition is that even apart from these particles themselves, there's a little bit more energy coming from the information itself. The information in regards to the charge, in regards to mass, in regards to maybe interaction with other atoms, and all of this information all together adds even more energy to a typical atom. Not a lot of energy, but just a little bit. Once again, this is all theoretical, but it is nevertheless a really interesting theory. On top of this, a lot of proponents of this theory of information mass energy equivalence have also suggested that maybe this is how we can explain the mysterious dark matter. Maybe the presence of this extra mass that sort of makes universe behave in the way we see is coming from this information mass, information energy. It's of course a very big maybe, but the proposition is still there. Also, interestingly, there's another study you can find in the description that talks about this very interesting concept known as the information catastrophe. The idea here is very simple. Based on the total amount of information produced by humans today and the amount of information that seems to be increasing every single year, at some point we're going to be producing so much information that it's actually going to be a significant mass of planet Earth. And it's also going to require a tremendous amount of energy. 
And specifically, based on current estimates, in 500 years, if we don't decrease the amount of information produced, the total amount of produced information per year is going to equal half of planet Earth in mass. So that's sort of the catastrophe in a nutshell. It's still obviously very philosophical and somewhat theoretical, and it also obviously expects the humans to survive for 500 years, increasing their total capacity even more. But it is an interesting proposition. As always, you can find more in the description below. Anyway, back to the study on the universe. So one of the first things the scientists did in this paper is work out how much information would a typical single elementary particle contain within itself. So here we're talking about an electron, a proton, and a neutron. By using the ideas from the Shannon's information theory and working out the total entropy produced by each individual particle, in this case, it was worked out that a single particle would contain approximately 1.509 bits of information, with the information representing things like mass, charge, or the spin of individual particles. And so by using the value of 1.509 and multiplying it by the total approximate amount of all individual particles in the universe, which is sometimes known as the Eddington number, named after this wonderful person Arthur Eddington, it became possible to estimate the total amount of information in the entire universe. Now, this is obviously not the first time it's been done, but this right now is one of the more interesting attempts and one of the more interesting strategies. And so when it comes to the total information in terms of bits of the observable universe, the number is 6 followed by 80 zeros bits of information, a pretty large number. But interestingly, this is actually an underestimate from some of the previous estimates. And that's because in the previous estimates, the scientists usually use the total entropy of the entire universe, not just the observable universe. So this is maybe a little bit more accurate in terms of the universe we're actually able to observe. But this study only considered particles that are usually referred to as fermions. In other words, protons, electrons, and neutrons. It sort of did not consider bosons, or mesons, and so in some sense maybe the number is actually higher. Although in this case the scientist in the paper does suggest that the information can only be stored in particles that have non-zero mass, and that other particles like bosons can only transfer information temporarily and don't really store it. Nevertheless, it would be interesting to find out how this changes if we were to consider all of the particles, all of the possible particles in the entire observable universe. And also, according to the scientists in the paper, some propositions have even suggested that information can even be stored in the fabric of space itself. This is what we sometimes refer to as the holographic principle. And if some of this information is indeed stored in the space-time fabric and is also contributing to a little bit of mass, in some sense it does have a possibility of being the mysterious dark matter. Specifically, if we were to try to explain dark matter in terms of information, a tiny bit of information about various types of matter in the universe, in this case could literally be the dark matter particle that we're trying to find. And in order to account for the entire dark matter in the universe, we will require this much information in bits, 52 followed by 93 zeros. This could represent the dark matter that we're trying to find, except that it's not just matter, it's basically information. But nevertheless, even though all of this is extremely exciting and somewhat interesting, a lot of it is still very, very theoretical. There's really no proof just yet that you do lose mass or energy when information is erased as was presented in some of the previous papers. At least no definitive proof. It would also be extremely difficult to prove that a single particle contains 1.5 bits of information. So all of this at the moment is still theoretical and is based on other theories that were not entirely experimentally proven just yet. Nevertheless, it's still a very intriguing proposition and something that one day could help us understand the universe a little bit better. So do check out the papers in the description below and once we find out what else is going on with the information energy mass equivalence principle or once something else is released in regards to dark matter as information, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.